Hi, and welcome. In this video, we'll be setting up the working environment in NC. As you can see, we've started out without a robot, so let's do something about that. We can either choose a predefined machine, or we can construct our own robot cell. For this video, we'll be using Machine Maker to quickly and easily put together a robot cell. To enter Machine Maker, we click on the Utilities button in the top left and choose Machine Maker. Now that we've launched Machine Maker, we're confronted with another empty window. If you look at the left hand side, we're presented with options to populate this empty space with mechanisms, which is exactly what we're going to do. However, we're going to click on the robot arm icon instead of the add mechanism button. This is so we can easily filter the presented list of mechanical elements. Firstly, we set the list visibility to online. This will interrogate the available components on NC server, instead of just the parts that you have saved locally. Obviously, if you've gotten a set of CAD models of your exact robot arm and accessories, then you'll be able to select those. However, doing so will be a much more involved process than what we're working on today, so that'll be covered in a later video. Further to that, it's worth noting that this is a very cursory overview of what Machine Maker is truly capable of. It's an exceptionally powerful and flexible piece of software with accurately developing a true digital twin of the machine you'll be programming and working with. Today's usage will barely scratch the surface of what can be achieved with it, but should give a very clear idea of how accessible and user-friendly the software is. Moving on, once we've told Machine Maker to use the online repository, we then click on Robot and specify the model of robot arm we're using. In this case, it's a KUKA KR210-2, which is a very common arm. We then click on Add to insert the arm definition into the scene. As you can see, there is also a little information about the arm's capabilities and properties. Now, we want to accompany the arm with the turntable, so we select the table field and start typing to axis. This will present us with a list of dual axis turntables, which can rotate and tilt. Again, we're offered a small amount of information about the turntable itself. Now the turntable clearly isn't in the right place, so we can move it using a couple of different methods. Firstly, we can click on it, then holding down control, drag it into position. This is good for putting together a ballpark layout, but for the level of precision that's actually required, we use the transform coordinate system on the right. So we'll set the turntable coordinates to 2500 in X, 0 in Y, and we'll leave Z alone, because that's based on the base value for the turntable, specifically the height of its top plate. We'll also rotate in A, which is using Z as a rotational axis by 90 degrees. I'm panning around a little bit, just to make sure I'm happy with the layout I've got. For the sake of this video, it's fine, although 2500mm might be a little too far away for a turntable in relation to this model of arm in real life. Moving on, we're going to add a milling spindle as the arm's end effector. So we go back to the robot icon on the left, choose end effector, and I type in spindle. This gives us a relatively crude model of a spindle. Given how many different models and makes of milling spindle there are out there, this was an easy choice for this video. We add the spindle, and now zooming in on the point at which the spindle is affixed to the arm, we can see that there's no room for an interface plate or bracket, so I'm going to move the spindle along by 40mm. Double click on the spindle to specifically manipulate it. Notice how the first window that comes up is the TCP window. This is something that is exceptionally important to set properly when actually calibrating a robot for real world use. In this video, we're going to work with whole numbers and not worry over much about precision. But when we're setting this up for the real thing, shortcuts cannot be taken. So, to move the spindle itself, we click on the Model tab above the TCP tab. Then at the bottom, we move the spindle by 40mm in Z. This is calculated using the orientation of the center of the mounting flange on the end of the robot arm. So Z is the correct direction from that point. Once we've clicked apply, it's closed the whole sub window. We need to reopen it because the TCP value hasn't shifted with the spindle itself, so we need to move it along accordingly. 
We add 40 millimeters to the TCP value that's listed, bringing it up to 130. Notice how the indicated end mill has moved along to the center of the spindle nose. With that, we've defined the robot cell. We now click on the Save As icon and choose a destination folder for the new robot schema to be saved to. Once it's saved, we can then click on the NC icon in the toolbar to move back to the NC environment. We then tell NC that we want to use the new definition in this tab and not to save the project because we've not done anything of note in it, so there's nothing worth saving. We still can't see the robot on the turntable though, so we have to turn their visibility on. This is done using the machine visibility button. Once that's enabled, we can then click on zoom extents to be able to take in the whole cell in one view. We can orbit the scene using the view cube to give a clearer picture of how things are set out now. Clicking on the edges will orbit by 45 degrees, the faces will orbit by 90 degrees, and the corners will give a compound 45 degree turn on two axes. This concludes the first NC video.